something important to share just so that you guys have the most update information because I guess that there's still going to be some misinformation because this stuff hasn't really gone viral in terms of the mainstream understanding. Basically, what happened was at the breaking convention, Nichols pretty much debunked the fact that the pineal gland produces any quantity of DMT that can be active and cause near-death experiences and out-of-body things when people were in great stress. So the first person that actually presented this information was someone by the name of Nature Boy. You guys may recognize Nature Boy because he created the pretty popular STB tech for DMT on Shroomery. And he was the one that shared it with all of us on the Shroomery, so that's how I found out about the Breaking Convention video. He sums it up by saying, While DMT might be present in the human body, it is found at the picogram level. And considered its poor receptor affinity, it will never reach a threshold concentration sufficient for psychedelic effects. Current, up to 2017, research has trumped the information available five to seven years ago. The jury is no longer out on this point, based upon the most current studies. Bottom line, endogenous DMT, although present in minuscule amounts, can never have any detectable effects, even when the organism, mouse or human, has all the met metabolic pathways that break down DMT pharmacologically blocked. Since that is not the organism's natural state, even under stress, the theory that DMT is responsible for out-of-body experiences and other experiences is just dead wrong. Conclusions. My conclusions, you can, like Ripley said, believe it or not. DMT is not produced in concentration significant to activate CNS 5HD 2A receptors and is rapidly broken down by NAO if it is produced. There's no evidence to suggest that DMT can be accumulated within the brain or within neurons at significant concentrations. Such inferences either are not supported by direct experimental evidence or are based on flawed experiments. Endorphins, especially dynorphin, are released during stress. Dynorphin has high affinity for kappa opioid receptors, which can mediate hallucinations and out-of-body experiences. And other endorphins and kephalins can mediate euphoria and analgesia. Asphyxiation or cardiac arrest paradoxically lead to brain activation resulted in marked increases of brain neurotransmitters such as dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, the latter of which can stimulate 5-HD2A receptors, and asphyxia induces excessive release of excitatory amino acid glutamate in drugs such as ketamine, which also raise cortical glutamate can produce out-of-body experiences. So, although the romantic notion that DMT is released from the pineal gland to produce altered states of consciousness at various times of stress is appealing, I say to some, it's appealing to many. Science and logic suggest that other, more well-studied systems provide more sound explanation for out-of-body experiences. Actually, I found this to be somewhat disappointing because I like the romantic idea that DMT will be produced in high quantities in the pineal gland at death. But that isn't to say that just because DMT isn't responsible that the state that we go in at death is still the, exactly the same as the DMT state. Like, they could just be two different ways of getting to the same place, you know? It doesn't have to involve DMT, that's just one method. So Nature Boy has always been someone who's a pretty big, what I thought to be a pretty big materialist or science person that, that's interested in debunking quackery. What was very interesting about this post was that I said that they should have had Stuart Hammeroff on the Breaking Convention because I said that his ideas are very interesting, and I didn't think that uh, Nature Boy would agree with me, but this is what he said afterwards. He said, yeah, the Penrose Hammeroff notion of quantum consciousness mediated by neural microtubules is fascinating. I think they are definitely onto something. Here is a very complete, fairly easy article which explains the mechanisms without being overly complicated on the physics end. Spectacular stuff. If you read through it a couple of times, you will understand it. And then someone said, I haven't heard of the Penrose Hammeroff model of consciousness. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, but it's extremely intriguing. Hammeroff mentioned some studies suggesting that other psychedelics can bind to tubulins and potentially increase the resonant frequency of the water in the microtubules. And then Nature Boy 
commented on that quote saying, it is intriguing, isn't it? It makes so much sense the way they relate the easily observable microbiologic cell structure with the quantum wave function of consciousness. I love it, especially when you factor in the fact that this theory leaves open the possibility of the preservation of consciousness after death, however widely dispersed, due to non-locality. Although our minds and bodies appear to be physical in the classic non-quantum physics sense, we are all, every atom of us, at our most fundamental matter ruled by quantum rules laws. This pretty much blew my mind that someone like him, because he, I think he's either a paramedic or an EMT, retired though, so he might even be a doctor, I'm not really sure. He knows a lot about, he keeps, he keeps up to a lot of what is going on with the DMT research and stuff like that, so it's really interesting that he personally believes that Penrose and Stuart Hameroff are onto something. And I'll give you a link in the description about the Stuart Hameroff theory of or or. Even though DMT doesn't have anything to do with out-of-body experiences on a chemical level, when we do introduce DMT through the body by actually taking it, it affects the microtubules quantum state and then we can experience a lot of non-locality and spookiness. Hopefully that cleared up any sort of doubts you've had about DMT and what it can actually do, and even though it's not produced in the pineal gland, it is cool that it affects microtubules in such a strange way.